Hi guys, good morning for here, Pacific Rim Part 2 Recap In the last episode I forgot to mention that in the UA attack Our main protagonist's childhood um, slash type of mother or kind of kind person general Ming Yeah, general Ryu? Ryu uh, The chick that took care of the man, the chick that took care of the protagonist that basically I said, what have you done now? We're not gonna save your ass this time. And she unfortunately died. And she would have died in two ways. By being grabbed almost by the robot head like this. And died by the impact of touches of the hand. And it's a bit bullshit because... The thing is this. How should I say why it's bullshit? It's because this. She was a nice character in the other movie, and now they decided... Ah, we need to... How do we best eliminate this character? Oh, I know! The best classic idea ever! Execution. Ching! And I'm like... Okay, this is stupid. I didn't watch the full movie right now, but... Even I could understand that she was more important. If I was more invested... I was invested with the main protagonist a bit, to be fair. But I liked her character. You know, she was like, I don't take shit, to be fair. Mm. What do you think? She didn't take shit. She's like, could you please help me? And she's like, no. You're going to go in in your ass and do the military school or else you will sit in the prison. No buts about that question. Anyway, a moment for silence of her. The funny thing is, even if I haven't seen the first movie, I can understand that she had a better impact there. Though, unfortunately, she died. Womp, 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 womp. Spoiler warning. Wait, you should have guessed it by now. Anyway. Um... Another funny thing is when they go up in the when they go up with the jetpacks on the robots, one of them says, "Hey, uh, you know a calming song that my grandmother, that my old." <clears throat> Two seconds. A calming song that my grandmother used to sing, as one of the Russian guys says. He's kind of cool. He's the cool guy. I think he's cool. He's like la 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 la, and the song that pops up is the song that I've heard. Since I was in, um, I think my last days at school, basically. Feeties, by the way, I think it is. And it was the song, la 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 It's, you will find it and you will know who that is. If I say, la 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 or something like that, you will know what it is. But anyway, you know. And it's like, holy shit, that's old. But secondly, it was funny a bit. A bit funny for me. But, then I realized a hidden conclusion in my head that I think about when I slept last night. That is just cranking in an old, very old, funny, but not funny in this context, joke. That's fucking ridiculous. Though to be fair, the Russian grandma maybe showed him something else, but he was like, nope, I'm stuck on this one instead. And the Indian guy said exactly what he said it out of my mouth. He said, I am nauseated by this music. Secondly, I am think I'm gonna die of this song, and I'm scared afraid of that song. Hmm. And the other guy like, no, that song calms me down. That song has calmed me down, congrat. Something like that. To be fair, the other guy was funny as well. Both of them were kind of funny, but I knew. The funny thing is, I have seen a bit of cliches in my days, so I knew the Indian guy would kick the bucket. If it is, and if it isn't this, it's there are two choices. You have in horror movies, always the black guy, Mexican guy, anyone else could be, or main protagonists, but that doesn't happen often, but it could be. Anyway. They are usually those people that kick the bucket in the movies. But it could be different. It's depending on changes, of course. It's modern and depending on changes. But the thing is, 
I enjoyed the Indian guy and he had a better job. His father's job at doing plastic surgery for women. Which could actually work a lot of money because plastic surgery is not cheap. Or even not, yeah, it's expensive. Anyway, he even said it in the movie himself. I should have rather sticked with the... Um, two seconds, I need to drink. Come on. Sup thing. There it goes. Anyway, though, he said, I should have rather stayed at my dad's place and basically just work my days and win a lot of cash. But unfortunately, he kicks the bucket. I'm not going to tell you how he kicks the bucket, though. That's going to be served for later. Anyway, we're going to continue back. I'm going to jump back in the story to Mrs. Um, Sao. Yes. Mrs. Sao with the pretty cool white robots. Pretty cool ones. Mm -hmm. That only wants to use one pilot. And she's like, no, the UN were awful with those robots. If we had only one pilot, it will work. It was, uh, it was uh, drones. Drones, yes, drones. Yeah, drones, whatever. The thing is, the thing with the drones is a bit relevant with what happens in the United States or what happens everywhere else when you have a drone. Hmm. You can use them for fun. You can use them for art. You can use them for excavations. And you can use them for horrible shit. So uh, I was like, yes. This is gonna go in two ways. It's gonna go Terminator, or it's gonna go aliens on them. Guess which one it's gonna go. But uh, I will let you guess that one later. Anyway, though, I enjoy the voice actors. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not so bad. Secondly, I got an interesting connection between actually the. We will end the apocalypse reference from the first movie. Mm -hmm. It was funny even if I didn't know the full context of it. I could still hang it in because they made a recap in the movie, so that was nice. Anyway, though, um, she basically talks to her slash bodyguard slash lover. Could you please help me? And we should, like, secure and everything. How is the project going? Mm. And one of, them, one of the people almost gets fired because... He's like, she's like, fix it or else I will fire you. Oh, they're also working in China in this. Yeah. Secondly, I don't know this, but Japan, I think you need to crank down the meter of a magnet, which is your country technically. I don't mean anything bad, but I mean the magnet in particular question is the monster magnet. If the monsters really wanted to go there, yeah, in the movie we realize that the scientists, um, the cool scientist with the ship here, or with the um, staff, he realizes that the monsters are gathering to the kaiju, or mm. the kaiju, are gathering to the mountain Mount Fuji because it's natural resources basically turns them on to try to conquer the world with. And what they were to do is kind of a logical thing for the monsters. They wanted to do a dust cloud so the new overlords can take over. And also we figure out that our main friend, there were one funny scene, one really funny scene in Action Cool, was when we have the Stephen Hawking guy and the other guy, which was his friend from the first movie, you, fighting. You too. And uh, Newton. Uh, yeah, Isaac Newton. Uh, Newton, whatever. Newton. Hope you enjoyed the video, anyway. Newton, anyway. They're, like, cranking up. the. They're be beating the shit out of the guards. And the guards are like, yeah, we're gonna stay here and be calm. And then, like, oh, shit, my nuts. No, my mon my face. Not my beautiful face. Mm. And they got beaten on. And killed, actually. Unfortunately for them... They don't get paid in uh, the salary and the gathering of... I wonder if they should do a movie called The Henchmen of the World. The Henchmen of Video Games. That would have been funny. You know, that's a good idea. Henchmen of Video Games. How they feel that they're treated. 
To be fair, that would be cool. What, what's happened with the drones? Uh, the drones become cuckoo and the guy like bleeding and like, Oh my god, my brain is being taken over by alien powers. It's basically like the guy is getting a weird head injection by the alien. Mm. I wonder what the alien is showing him. Oh, I know. Maybe Star Wars the Christmas special. Yeah. No, not that one. No! Not the Wookiee Whales! No! That's what I think he is projecting into his brain. If I was a person that would be projected into an alien. Or controlled by an alien. No less, yes. But anyway, I think there are good aliens in the world. Maybe there could be. Who knows? But anyway, the point is, he gets controlled, and they fail the experiment, and then he tells, um, then he tells Newton, No! We were gathered with the aliens! We are joined as one mind! We will not lose this battle to you humans! And... Roll questions! A. What would happen? They get defeated. B. They get defeated so much that the humankind don't exist. C. The aliens get their ass kicked after a complicated battle. Answer the questions later after this video. Bye. Anyway though, continue. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other guy just like, yeah, what the hell are you doing, man? You shouldn't do this. And it's kind of nice. I'm siding with Stephen Hawking here. But unfortunately the other guy freaking lies to him and escapes. And actually one good thing for the other person that was the enemy villain. That was Miss... Um, yeah, the one that does the drone things. She actually uses almost a gun to kill him. Actually, that would be a perfect question. Just kill the bastard. Don't let him stay there. And also we see a scene with the... What, uh, what was it? His name again? Thomas? Uh, Tim. Who? Uh, the other scientist guy. Oh, Newton. Newton. We see him talking and conversing with his alien brain wife. Mm. Weirdly enough. With a freaking type of... Um, looking kind of old Oculus Rift version, maybe? I don't know. And I don't even want to imagine what he's seeing inside of there. Something weird, no less. Though, they're gonna make a sequel of this. Oh no. They're gonna make a prequel. Or a prequel. They're gonna make a continuation. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, no. It was fun in some aspects. But it's like, nope. Nope. It's a funny movie, but I think like, uh... Oh, they did also a reference to a manga a manga thing. What? A manga statue. They did a reference to a Gundam statue. A cool Gundam statue, though, to be fair. But it wouldn't even exist. Because it's in the future. And it wouldn't even be constructed by this point. You know, it's contracted in the past. It could exist. But the same scale and the same statue in Japan. Good idea, good idea. You're just t tucking in the nostalgia strings for people. That's not bad, but... Okay, that's kinda bad. I retract my question. That's kinda bad. You know, they're dragging on the nostalgia strings. For people that like Gundam things. But you're the, the drone, I uh, The drones go to the base, to the main military base, and yada yada, the guy escapes to the main military base and our scientist guy with the staff talks about no they're controlled no the alien brains are taking over and infecting the robot's mind man, 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 you're the non team you have it oh they're sapping they're sapping basically the gates open to the little monster kaijus to come out again the rings yeah they're basically undoing what the main protagonists father and the main protagonist of the first movie fixed mm. kinda 
Isn't that a bit ironic? I just imagine this. Okay. Just think me for a second that I am the main protagonist of the first movie, just sitting like this. I'm gonna show you how the reaction would be. I am here, sitting and watching the news. And then seeing... Oh shit. Some bastard has opened up the kaijus again! Are you kidding me? I'm 26 years old now, damn it! I cannot do this shit! Secondly, I sacrifice my mind! My freaking body, my soul, and my work for what? This? So the monsters can open it again? <sighs> Why could I not have retired later? Or even not retired at all? Oh, that's the guy's kid that technically sacrificed in the first movie. Yay, that's nice. But I'm like... Could I not go there and just beat the crap out of that kid? I wonder. But of course I'm too old for this. Maybe he's not even old. I'm just thinking that he's sitting there like... Eating a steak. I'm just imagining he's eating a steak. Hope you enjoy. This is my interpretation of what the main protagonist would think in the first movie. Or what the main protagonist from the first movie would think of this movie's event. He would be like... He's eating a steak and like, are you kidding me? Everything I sacrificed, everything that went of my power and everything that we did, everyone that we lost, for what? This bastard opening up the portal again? Oh, one funny thing though. <laughs> I'm laughing at that kaiju got severed in half. To be fair, he would laugh at that thing. Mm. Because he, God knows, he hated when the kaiju basically injected one of their needles into his back. I suppose. Oh, that happens also with one of my main protagonists as well. And also, I don't understand the logic of this. Why did the other guy die and not everyone else if they would be hit? Like, one of the robots even is destroyed in two pieces. One of them is ripped apart and they can eject. The question is, you would have been dead. I know the other chick, which was the... Um, what should we say? Um, the blonde the blonde chick. I don't remember her name right now. Vic. Vic. Yeah, Vicky. Uh, Vic. Victoria. Vic. Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. Oh, that's a nice name though, Victoria. But anyway, the point was... She was in the middle of the cockpit of the body of the robot. She could have had time, but I'm like, you need to be flash to even eject so fast. Because the kaiju was like this, grabbing and ripping it apart in pieces faster than you could tell. Or I could tell it, but someone would have died and only one guy out of, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six people only one guy died, and the guy that I think was most funny. That was just hilarious. He was not super funny, but seriously, he didn't deserve to die. He had a business. He had a father, or his father, you know. He had a father. He had a nice business that he could win a lot of cash. That went just out of the dream. Sorry, that one just went out of the fly for him. He's like, I think he's sitting in heaven thinking like this. Or just thinking. I think he's sitting in uh, this version movie, he uh, Heaven. He's thinking, why shouldn't I have chosen to stay at home? But of course not. I needed to be a hero, of course. Anyway, though, if we continue with the story, sorry for rambling on and on. Sorry. We continue with the story, the alien, the yada, yada the attack. And they basically go to Japan because they want to have the energy source, as I told you before. And then our main protagonist tried to stop it, doing some cool moves. Kind of those cool moves, to be fair. The fight was kind of cool. <coughs> Sorry for talking along. But the, the fights were cool. I liked the fights. I didn't like that the Russian guy did an insult to the monster because I know if the monster could speak human language, 
he would say screw you and use one of his three kaiju abilities secondly I like that the kaiju actually beat the crap out of these guys because he's like do you mess with me also they did a reference almost to Godzilla that was cool but also like dude seriously it's an interesting thing but I think Godzilla would be like seriously dude what the hell think of something original maybe also the ramifications of the cost of the whole city with the money and uh, all the destruction <laughs> John Boy, um, uh, Finn's character Jake Jake yeah but Jake wouldn't have enough to pay shit out of that that happened to Japan like it's impossible you destroyed half a country's freaking buildings and then you're supposed like oh we're just throwing snow at each other at the end and like I'm like thinking in my head that was funny but secondly I'm thinking holy shit you're gonna be charged with so much problems with cash that even the sequel will not continue mm. which I'm happy about if it doesn't anyway though hope you enjoy so they figured it out and actually we have a nice moment between the main villain and his creation mm. and the creation is like looking at him like this hi dad and then it's like hi mm. and he's like ah, later dad I need to go and kill this mountain bye Oh, four Jaegers. Uh, four Jaegers attacked it. Uh, one with orange, one with the uh, spinning they, sledgehammer thingy. His name. Sword. His name was uh, Guardian Bravo. Guardian Bravo. Titan Redeemer. Titan Savior Athena. Athena Savior. On Gypsy Ranger. Gypsy. Gypsy Ranger, yeah. Athena. Okay. Avenger. Okay. Uh, Gypsy Avenger. Okay, it was nice the first part, but then I'm like thinking, okay. But, oh, also one thing. The female protagonist says all of these robots' names like they were with toys. Oh, wait, let me see that. Let me show you this. This is what she's saying. Toys. 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 Toys, 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 toys. And toys. And I'm like, thinking, okay, it's it was a cool movie, but then I'm thinking, in my head, it's an interesting idea, maybe it will continue, but I don't know. But then I'm thinking like this, are you serious with me, man? Product placement, good. Okay, it could be, but it's also like, what the hell, man? Okay, so they get the climatic battle, and they discover that the kaiju actually fused with three brains, if we go back to the story. Mm -hmm. uh, hope you enjoy my review rambling on we're jumping from different points from the movie all right anyway we get the meeting with the robot scrappy again with the little round little robot that one was cool and they have the genius plan of oh use one of the thrusters and thrust me with my arm like this and they succeeded to be fair, one of the moments that I think could have been a funnier or more interesting was if John Boyega's character would have sacrificed himself. It would have made more sense. Like father, like son, I suppose. But nope! They decided to go with the same one. Though to be fair, I enjoy his character so it's kind of funny. But they got saved at the last second. Secondly, the other guy that was his pilot, which was the... What should we call him? The guy that got stopped by Cream when he tried to talk. His uh, military buddy, we will call Lambert. him. Lambert. What? Lambert? Yeah. Lambert. The last name. His, it sounds his, like a his last name is Lambert. That was an interesting name. Whatever, but um, I don't understand this. Here we have, I will show you, a replication. Here we have Lombard behind our main villain. Okay, you know what? I'm doing this. 
two seconds. Hope you enjoy. So, I'm just gonna represent with these characters here. So, we have Lumberg. Crap. Ah, oh, whatever. We take another one. <laughs> these are the Beatles guys, anyway. Um, we have Lumber here. And um, we have the bad guy here sitting like, Oh, my plans! No! Just take plan B then. I would just take plan B. And then he beats the crap out of the bastard. Punch. Oh, sorry. I didn't show you that one. He beats the crap out of the bastard. Pum. And he is knocked out in punch. He's like, Wham! He's knocked out in punch like, oh. And then he's like, No more plans for you! And then I'm like, are you serious? Do you think a plan B would work? Secondly, how did Lumber come behind him when he had a wound the size of... Uh, let me just show you my size here. Hope you enjoy the video. He had the wound here in vital areas of the stomach. And you need to believe me you need to disbelieve me, or make me disbelieve, that the wound should have healed up itself. What told me, mate? What do you take me for, mate? That I'm born yesterday? Seriously. How much was the wound? The wound was like a gaping wound. He couldn't even stand up in the machine inside of the robot. Hmm. How can I disbelieve? That he would climb up on a skyscraper, or maybe he took the stairs, maybe he took the elevator, but how would the freaking elevator work? Anyway though, some of people on, uh, you know, some of the people that tried to escape, they were assholes to others because they're like, Yeah, bye! Bye, Steve! Because the guy like, Wow, oh, please, let me, let me! And they're like, No, bye, I'm on the shelter lift, bye! And the chick is like, yeah, well, what the hell? Why did you leave Steve? And he's like, no questions asked. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. But the thing is, the main protagonist, or the side pilot, shouldn't have been able to do this. Run, climb, and then beat the shit out of the bad guy in just a couple of seconds. If you have a gaping wound, as I showed you before, that is the size of half of my stomach it's impossible I say impossible if they don't have the future technology which they do have but it's freaking impossible by the way hmm what do you think sir if you had a gaping wound in your stomach and you got it from a freaking kaiju I will go to hospital yes but that wound made him so much injured that he couldn't even stand on his legs. He needed to knee bend one of his knees to even try to stand up. Mm. So, that's a bit bullshit, movie. That's a bit bullshit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my review. We'll see you next time. I give this movie... Um, yeah, watch it on TV. Watch it on uh, Netflix. Watch it on any site. You know, I enjoyed the movie for what it was a bit. But now when I'm thinking about it or reflecting on it, just give it a rental or something. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Arvid is in. Captain Alfred signing out.